So my name is Bobby Kenny, and I'm 35 years old. And uh, I was originally born in California in San Diego. Grew up, had a great childhood, really hardworking dad, great loving mother. You know, a little bit of a rebellion kid throughout high school, and you know, did the stupid juvenile things sometimes kids do. And uh, started hanging out with the wrong crowd, and um, started really liking pain pills and uh, you know benzos as well. Went to my first rehab when I was 19. After my first rehab is when I got uh, introduced to heroin and uh, became a heroin addict. Met a woman when I was 22 years old, ended up getting her pregnant, and then she gave birth to my first son when I was 23. His name's Cameron. So I became a dad pretty young and got thrown into that. Fell in love with this little boy who became best friends. He's my best friend today. I would get some time in recovery and then I'd have a setback. And then I'd get some more time in recovery than another setback. I couldn't ever really maintain and get any substantial length of time in recovery. So it was always, you know, fall down, pick myself back up. Then I had my daughter, Madison. So I had two kids, uh, same mother, and then juggled being a dad of two. And that was that was hard, And but we made it work. And um, yeah, everything just moved right along, but I was still struggling with my addiction, but it wasn't nearly as, it wasn't that obvious. I was really doing a good job hiding it. So as I'm hiding it, you know, I'm, I'm building lies and shame and guilt and, you know, I know I'm not being my true potential. What I had to do was figure out a way where I can, you know, become the best version of myself. You know, sought out doctors and, and treatment and they try to help me and I really just couldn't, it, it's like it didn't click. I wanted it so bad to click, but it just didn't. My father, he got diagnosed with COPD and became terminally ill. He had asked me and my kids to move in and be a stay-at-home caregiver uh, for him and my mom. As I moved in with my parents, I get a phone call from my best friend since seventh grade's sister. Uh, she was like a little sister to me. Her name was Laura. And she called me and said that her brother James is no longer with us and he had overdosed and passed away. So I moved into my dad's house, my mom and dad's house. Just found out my best friend since seventh grade passed away. Um, that was a big hit. That was a really big hit. And then I'm watching my, my very, very sick father uh, basically die in front of me. And that was really, really hard. And, um, you know, I felt like I had the weight on my shoulders and uh, trying to keep a happy face for my kids and also a happy face for my parents because they needed me. Before you know it, my dad took a turn for the worse and he had passed away. That was so hard for me and my family. Very, very hard. My dad, he was the uh, best man I ever knew. And he was my best friend. He was my cheerleader, biggest supporter. So now I have my, my dad who passed away, my best friend since seventh grade who passed away, an unconsolable mother, you know, who, who can't even stand to live in the home anymore because she can't, she don't want to be there without my dad. And, um, you know, she moved out and I spiraled. I just uh, completely didn't know what to do. I lost control of everything and just, you know, lost, lost control of myself and just went off the deep end. Ended up living out of my car for a while and then uh, I was able to get enough money together for a hotel. So I was living out of a hotel, no more job, no more money, just I literally uh, was there laying in bed sick, didn't have any more of my drugs, just completely broken. So I got to knock on the doors for my mom and she's in tears begging me to get help and just, you know, please just you can do this, I have faith in you. And I didn't have anything to lose at that point. You know, I was just, oh, 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 okay, I'll go get help. Didn't know how I was gonna get the help. You know, we didn't have money for treatment. We didn't have any answers or connections to anybody that I could go to the thirty, forty thousand dollars treatment centers. But I remember she spent a long time on the phone and before you know it, she was getting me into a detox facility. So I go to this detox facility and I'm there and detox is the worst that it's ever been. And uh, Really, I think the older I get, the, the harder it became to get off of it, you know, and um, it, I was miserable, but I mustered through it and um, made it through detox and made it through treatment, ended up becoming a, finding some job on Indeed, and it was, um, it was for a referral agent for health insurance. So what I would do is, as I would help individuals get health insurance through the Affordable Health Care Act, basically sign them up for free health insurance. So I'd go to sober livings, I'd go to IOPs, I'd go to rehabs, and I'd tell them, hey, my name is Bobby Kinney, and I can help people get free health insurance uh, through the Affordable Care Act. And they'd say, oh, you, you do what Nadine does at Hope Dealers. And I'm like, who? 
who's Nadine? What is Hope Dealers? I would never heard of them before. And it happened about four or five more times. And it got to the point where the last time it happened, I'm just like, look, do you know who Nadine is? Like, can I get a hold of her? Do you have her number? Where can I find her? I was like, yeah, I have her, her number right here. And he gave me her number. And I called her. And I, you know, spent about 20 minutes on the phone with her, telling her a little about a little bit about who I am and uh, what I do. And she said, great, come in, we'll meet. And so I came in here to The Rock and uh, she interviewed me and hired me right on the spot. At first I got hired on to do the health insurance and help people, you know, get signed up. And then it became into a peer support outreach manager. Um, so I started doing that and like a month into me working here, Nadine is doing something on her spreadsheet and she goes, hey, wait, you're, you're one of our clients. I said, what? No way. <laughs> she said, yeah, you're right here and showed me on the list. So yeah, I've actually been a client of Hope Dealers for two years now. And uh, it is because of them that I was able to go to treatment, you know, get put back on the right path and clean myself back up. They've had such a huge impact on my life and it has all come full circle.